Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna give you a rundown of the main areas in Logic Pro's user interface. I'll also show you some quick and easy ways to use key commands or keyboard shortcuts to access and navigate between these essential areas in Logic Pro. And knowing how to quickly access all areas of Logic's user interface is really important to building an efficient production workflow. And you know what else is great for improving your workflow? Today's sponsor, Boombox. As a producer and mixing engineer who primarily works remotely from my home studio, I really appreciate Boombox.io for keeping my projects and client feedback organized and all in one place. I can batch upload uncompressed audio files, I can invite collaborators to listen and leave timestamped feedback on my tracks, and create different versions of a project, and ultimately helps me get the annoying parts of my job done quicker so I can spend more time on on being creative as a music producer. But don't take my word for it, try it out for yourself. You can sign up today at boombox.io and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. I have a demo project here that I've created to show you Logic's interface. I've included a link in the video description below to download this demo project for free. So you can open this demo project and follow along with me if you like. This main area here, which is the main arrangement area in Logic, is called the Tracks area. This is where you're typically going to be recording and editing content within your project. On the left side of the Tracks area, you have your Tracks and Track Headers. And on these Tracks, you'll see different regions. These blue ones are Audio Regions, the green ones are MIDI Regions, and these yellow ones are Pattern Regions that are used with the Step Sequencer. Now, if you want to create a new track, you can click this plus button right here, and this will bring up the choose a track type dialog, or you can use the shortcut option command N. This will bring up that same dialog. Now, one thing that might look a bit different than the previous video is that the dialog here is in this darker color because I'm using macOS dark mode, which can be set from your system preferences or system settings. And there is a more colorful view for the new tracks dialog. If you go to Logic Pro settings or Logic Pro preferences, then go to the display settings. Here under windows, you can select show icons in new tracks dialog. So now if I press option command N again, I get these big colorful icons showing the different track types that I can create. So Logic is showing four main types of tracks here. You have software instrument tracks, these are tracks where you can load software instruments onto, or virtual instruments, as they're sometimes called. Audio tracks for recording with a microphone or a DI instrument like guitar or bass. Whether you choose an audio track or a guitar track, both of these are still considered audio tracks. And then we have drummer tracks, which is a type I haven't shown you yet. So let's go ahead and create a drummer track. You can choose different genres here. I'll go with like a, an electronic drummer, and then click Create. And this creates a drummer track and an associated drummer region. Now to delete tracks, there's two different ways you can do this. One, you can just press delete, which will delete all of the regions, then press delete again to delete the track. I'll press command Z to undo a couple times. And another way to do this is to just press command delete and that will delete the regions and the track. Additionally, if you want to duplicate a track, you select the track and then click this button right here. This will duplicate all of the settings of that track. However, it does not duplicate the regions. To move regions, you can just click and drag them down to other tracks or drag them to a different place on the timeline. Or what you can do is you can hold Option and you can duplicate regions. So you just hold Option, then drag the region to a different location to duplicate it. Other things you can do with tracks is you can reorder them. So if I want my Alive and Kicking It beat to be down in the bottom, I can just click and drag down. You can also resize the track headers or zoom the track headers by hovering your mouse over the boundary between two tracks and then just clicking and dragging up or down. So you can resize these to any size you like. Now, if you want all of the tracks to be the same size, you can hold shift and then just click on any of the boundaries between any of the tracks and it will make them all a consistent size. Additionally, you can zoom within the tracks area by using your zoom sliders up here. So this is your vertical zoom, this is your horizontal zoom, and there's also a few helpful zoom shortcuts. If you hold command and press up or down on your arrow keys, this will vertical zoom, 
And if you hold Command and left and right, you can use this for horizontal zoom. Another really helpful shortcut I like to use is to click on the background to deselect all of the regions, then press Z, and this will auto zoom everything to fit the tracks area. Additionally, a really important part of the tracks area is this little guy right here. This is the playhead. This shows you where playback is currently located. So if I wanna start from the beginning, I can set this to the beginning and then press spacebar to play. If I wanna jump over here to bar 13, I'll just set the playhead there and then press spacebar again. You can press the return key on your keyboard to set the playhead back to the beginning. Now, if you just wanna single out one or multiple tracks, like if I just want to hear this dynamic soft pad, I can click on this S button to solo the track. Additionally, you can press S on your keyboard to toggle the solo for that track. And likewise, I can press M here or press M on my keyboard to toggle the mute for that track. So if I wanna hear my arrangement without this soft pad, I can do that. Additionally, if you want to isolate or mute multiple tracks together, you can click and swipe up or down, and you can solo multiple tracks at the same time, or mute multiple tracks at the same time. Or you can hold shift and select multiples and use the M and S shortcut, as I demonstrated before, to toggle the mute and solo for all of the selected tracks. And all of these shortcuts can be used in real time while the project is playing. Additionally, on the track headers, you have your arm for record or record enable button and input monitor, which I demonstrated in a previous lesson. We'll come back to these later when we get into recording with MIDI and recording audio. You can also adjust the level of any of the tracks right here on the track header. So this is the volume level. And you can also adjust the pan, so the left-right positioning. Now, if you wanna set either of these settings, the volume or the pan, back to their default setting, you can hold Option on your keyboard and click on them, and it'll reset them to their default setting. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of the tracks area. Next, I wanna talk about the control bar and display. This is this whole area up here at the top. And this also includes something called the toolbar, which can be hidden and shown by clicking here. Most of the toolbar options will save for a future video. So I'll go ahead and hide the toolbar for now. And in the center of the control bar are the transport controls, which are your navigation and playback controls and the LCD display, which is how you can adjust things like the grid, the project tempo, the project key, etc. We're gonna skip these for now, but we'll come back to these in the next video. The next area I wanna show you is on the left, and this is called the inspector. This is this whole panel right here, and you can hide and show the inspector by clicking here, or you can press I on your keyboard to hide and show the inspector. There are three main areas in the inspector. You have the region inspector, which can be hidden or shown by clicking here. The region inspector shows parameters specific to the currently selected region. And then the track inspector shows parameters specific to the currently selected track. And then down at the bottom, there are two channel strips. The channel strip on the left shows you the current track that you have selected. So this is the dynamic soft pad. You can see this is the dynamic soft pad track. And if I click on another one, it switches to another track. The track that's on the right side shows you the stereo output. This is like the main output of Logic's mixer. And we'll come back to the main mixer editor in just a bit. So I like to think of this channel strip as a quick way to access the controls on a track that are not shown on the track header, which for software instrument tracks, like the one I have selected here, 
includes things like MIDI effects, the instrument itself, effects plugins, sends, output routing, groups, automation modes, pan, and volume control. For audio tracks, this includes the input routing, audio effects, sends, the output routing, groups, automation modes, and then pan and volume. An additional area to the left of the inspector is the library, which can be accessed by clicking here. But you can also press Y on your keyboard to hide and show the library. The library has two main functions. When you select a software instrument track, this will show you a list of software instrument presets that you can select. So for right now, I have this dynamic soft pad, and it's using the retro synth instrument here. And this is just a synth pad that's within RetroSynth. But if I wanted something more interesting, I could just select that track, and I could swap this out for any instrument I like. So for example, if I go to Synthesizer, then I'll go to Strings. Let's try this Bright Synth Strings patch. So you can see that the channel strip in the inspector now looks different because there's a different instrument preset and different effects assigned to this instrument preset. This collection of the instrument plus all of its effects is called a channel strip setting. Let's try another one. Let's try this Moonlight Arc instrument. So that's a quick way to choose different instrument presets from the library. Now, if you have an audio track selected, like I have my beat selected here, the library will show you preset effects chains for audio tracks. So if I go to drums and percussion, stereo kit, I can select this squeezed kit option, and this will add a few effects to that channel to change the tone of that track. And I can bypass these effects by hovering my mouse over the left side of the effects plugin. So this top one is a compressor. I can click on it to show the compressor, click again to hide it. But I can also bypass that effect by clicking on the left side of the effects plugin. So I can do that for all of these, and I can hear the original sound. And then I can turn these on and hear the affected sound. In this case, it's almost the same. There's just a, a bit more compression on it just to control the dynamics. One last area here on the left I wanna show you that's actually within the inspector is the quick help inspector. So if you click here, this will show the quick help options. And the quick help is really helpful if you forget what something is. You can just hover your mouse over that object and it'll give you a definition of what that is. So this is an audio region. This is a MIDI region. This is a pattern region. I can hover over the volume fader and it tells me that that's a volume fader and so forth and so on. So if you ever get stumped over what something is, just turn on your quick help and then hover your mouse over that object and logic will tell you what you're looking at. Okay, so I'm gonna press Y to hide the library. And then on the right, there are four browsers that you can show here. This first one is the list editors. We'll come back to these later, but this shows things like MIDI events, markers, tempo, and key signature and time signature changes. The next one is the notepad, and you can double click in here and type in any notes you like. So I find this really helpful to store the lyrics for your project or to write down chord ideas or editing or mixing or mastering notes. The one next to that is the loop library or loop browser. As I've shown in previous videos, you can press O on your keyboard to toggle the loop browser. I'm not gonna get too deep into loops yet because in a future video, I'll do a deep dive on how to use loops in Logic, how to build an entire musical arrangement with loops, and how to navigate and work within the loop browser. And then the very last one, allows you to browse through your project files so it shows all of the audio recordings in the project. And if you click on all files, this allows you to browse through your computer. So if I wanted to go to my desktop, maybe I'll go to my projects folder, and then I can go into some of these other folders and I can locate different audio files that can be dragged right into the project. Or you can just drag and drop them in from the finder. The last area I wanna show you in Logic's interface 
is actually not just one area, but several different areas. And these are the editors. Now, depending on what type of content you're working with, if you're working with an audio region or a MIDI region or a pattern region, the editors will be different. So if I double click on an audio region, this brings up the track editor, but you can also switch this over to the file editor or the smart tempo editor. Now, when you have an editor pulled up, you can hide and show the editor by pressing E on your keyboard. If I double click on a MIDI region, by default, this will open up the piano roll editor where you can edit your MIDI data. You can also edit the MIDI data in the score editor. The step sequencer is grayed out for this because this is not a pattern region. And then there's the smart tempo editor again. And once again, I can press E to hide the editor. Now, a quick way to access the piano roll editor is to select a region and then press P on your keyboard and that will quickly open up the piano roll editor. And you can use this to toggle the piano roll editor. Likewise, if I double click on a pattern region, this opens up the step sequencer. And if you double click on a drummer region, this will open up the drummer editor. And once again, you can press E to hide and show this. Now the very last area I wanna show you is the mixer. And Logic's mixer can be opened up by pressing X on your keyboard, and this will toggle the mixer. You can view each track in the tracks area as a channel strip in the mixer. And if you press the left or right arrow keys on your keyboard, you can jump back and forth between these different tracks. You can pull up or down the volume. You can pull the pan left and right. And as I demonstrated before, if you option click on any of these controls, it will reset them back to their default setting. Now, if I wanted to pull the volume of everything in my project up or down, what I could do is hold shift, select all of those faders, and then pull the volume up or down, and they'll all maintain their relative position. Now, when I pulled up the volume of all of these tracks, you can see that the stereo output, again, which is sort of like the main output of Logic's mixer, is peaking or clipping. It means that the volume level is going beyond what its maximum volume can be, and here it's showing that it's going above the maximum level by one dB. So you always wanna make sure that your stereo output is not clipping as you are mixing a project. And to get rid of your clips, you can just click on the clip indicator or peak indicator, and it will clear those clips or clear the peaks. I tend to use the word peak and clip in the exact same way, although there is a difference between peaking and clipping, depending on what type of gear or what type of equipment you're using. There's an additional master fader that controls the volume output of the entire project. And this is actually duplicated up here in the upper right. So this right here is just a sort of a shortcut to control your master fader. Now there are various uses for the master fader that we'll get to later on in the series. But for now, you should just be keeping your stereo out and master fader at unity, which basically means no added or reduced gain. So I just tend to option click on these and set them both to zero. Now if you find that the channel strips are a bit too small for your liking, you can click right here and this will expand the size and create wider channel strips. But I'm okay with the smaller channel strips. So that is a flyover of the Logic Pro user interface. In the next video, we'll dive into the LCD display and transport controls. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.